beginning the whole week together, and we have a uh, good and thank you and welcome uh, reader. So we are the second reader because we are reader in the tribunal. So welcome and thank you for helping, uh, sister. You're helping all of us as well. So thank you. And then we have our lady can hear us way over there. Yeah. Oh yes, he can. Wonderful. Uh, we again we're reading from the book of Sirach. All this uh, uh, the wonderful wisdom, uh, natural wisdom, and how it is elevated, and how it. Now here, uh, this uh, whole message here: Who in the nether world can glorify the Most High in place of the living who offer their praise? And I was thinking that uh, our our society, our environment. Our way of uh, living in society does not encourage people to understand that we praise God. I mean, what's that? The people think of uh, that uh, the ultimate purpose for us is liberty and freedom, and that we're here just only for enjoyment and uh, all that you can get at the moment. And, and to realize that we are here to give praise to God. So, uh, it's, it's, so I think this uh, needs to be reflected upon in our society that, uh, that, that we are to create an environment in which we are constantly praising God. No, no more can the dead give praise than those who have never lived. You who are alive and well shall praise and glorify God in His mercies. And if anybody did this with the Jewish people, they realized no. They realized and they put into practice the kind of constant prayer and praise to God. And look at the, the Middle East constantly they say, Allah, one God, praise to them and so on. But we are we are far from from that ideal today in our Western society. How great the mercy of the Lord, his forgiveness of those who return to him. So to build up to this kind of a, uh, of a living uh, who offer their praise to God. So that's, uh, and that's why in the psalm it's so natural for them to say, let the just exalt and rejoice in the Lord. Again, the constant praise and blessed is that is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered and so on. And a uh, uh, continuous praise to our to, to God. Um, and this uh, young man too, as he goes up to Jesus, is also in that environment of a constant praise to God. And so he's looking for a way and asking the Lord, how should I best give praise to God? And he tells him, and enters into this dialogue as regards the commandments. And then the Lord challenges him to say, one more thing you have to do, poverty. Because when you empty yourself, you have to fill it up with God. You know, nature abhors a vacuum. So if you get rid of your possessions, you will be making room for it. And then also the, the, the great, great uh, teaching is that, that salvation has to come from the outside. We don't give ourselves salvation. We don't save ourselves. It comes from God. And so this is why children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. And it, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of an eagle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. For one who thinks that by his riches he can earn heaven and buy it. There's no way. It's only through poverty recognizing that it comes and is given to us from the outside. So let us then continue with the Eucharist and remind us that, uh, that it is in that poverty that we are giving everything. It is in the bread and the wine that we receive the body and blood of Christ. That it, it is not something we invent, it is not our riches, it is something that we receive always from the outside. 